in terms of the higher peak of the market, like larger businesses over yeah. 10 million or even in the millions, um, yeah. in most cases, buyers and sellers are well educated. They're coming from investment banking, M&A, sure. um, uh, you know, um, uh, private equity and so forth. So they, they are, that's kind of what they do for a living. They're, they know it very well. Uh, for the smaller tier, the 10K, 50K, 100K, 200K sales, uh, both buyers and sellers. Uh, what would you say are some great categories for uh, sellers, you know, doing that, or they, they may get an exit for like two, a couple hundred thousand, which may be a nice exit for a sole preneur or a side business, or buyers, hey, um, you know, if, if you've been investing in the stock portfolio or crypto or so, and you see that it's not a solid opportunity, here's how you can actually tap into the marketplace and, and enter now, and these are the opportunities available. Uh, yeah, so are you asking, you know, for deals between 50 and 250K, like what should those buyers be looking for or what should those sellers be looking for? Both people who are not really all flip or, uh, yeah. and again, to give some context, while we were having lunch, uh, late lunch earlier, uh, we, you know, we discussed some cases such as, hey, um, agencies who want to build recurring revenue are yeah. now looking for some of these distressed SaaS to acquire something and, and put the OPEX that they already have, which is uh, not another expense. I like see. this is, most agencies don't know they can buy a business sure. and turn into a cash counter recurring revenue, for example, right? Yeah, so yeah. some of these categories. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, there's a lot of opportunity there for those buyers. Um, I think you should probably think about as a buyer, how can you cross sell and leverage off your existing customer base um, now, a great example that I that I heard recently was with actually it was with with private equity, um, but I still think that this can be applied to, you know, let's say fifty to two hundred fifty k. This private equity they owned a huge uh, e commerce brand in a in a niche. Um, they basically calculated the amount of money they were spending on marketing, and then they basically decided okay. Let's A B test. So let's let's see we can keep spending this amount on marketing, or we can buy a YouTube channel, and and we know that the traffic, we know the analytics. I'm not going to pretend I know much about YouTube analytics yet. Hopefully, it's something that I'll have to certainly get into with the way the market's going. But why don't we acquire this YouTube channel, uh, this fa this faceless YouTube channel with this target market with over a million subscribers with this uh, engagement rate? and see if we can cross sell our products through that and have an exclusive channel and it's paying off big time it's really paying off big time so i i think when you know when i heard that i was also that that example when you asked that question it triggered you know that meeting that i had where i thought okay if you're a, an, an agency um and you see a, a a discount not even discounted if you just see a, a product that's being built um, between 50 and 250k with a recurring customer base that you can acquire and build and bring in in-house why not consider that and upsell your existing customers rather than paying a white label or paying someone else to do it why don't you in-house it increase your EBITDA margins and and see where it takes you um, I think that would be a super interesting uh, example that you have um, and I think that those opportunities are certainly there at the moment, um, particularly for agencies that might want to upskill or upsell or improve their margins, but also um, increase their recurring revenue, which is really important. Amazing. And I love all these growth opportunities. That's, yeah, yeah. that's probably the number one reason I've, I've been on Flippo for over a decade, honestly. Yeah. When you told me, I mean, 14 years, it's, uh, yeah, uh, it's, and it's crazy. Yeah. I mean, it's, and, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm sharing it just for the audience, but uh, yeah, so, yeah. so many different cases, let's say SEO update comes up and you have some satellite websites and sometimes you need X number of links, or you can take five out of the top 10 positions on SERP by your own network of sites, right, that you've acquired. So you acquire a cash cow that has profitability, pays back in 18, 24 months, and then it sits as a cash cow, but you can also inject additional revenue. Or, uh, you know, if you're a digital agency, you can sell, um, you know, PR, digital branding, reputation building, by the way, online reputation building is one of the core aspects that we work with partners on for uh, distressed businesses, startups that did some layoffs and have some unhappy customers, lots of these cases, right? Uh, so these lead funnels, you buy a tool, uh, it's not self-sustainable, 
but you can integrate into your value proposition. You can integrate into your lead funnel. It could be a self-qualification survey for your customers. You can run traffic to it for your more expensive value proposition, right? So lots of these opportunities, they're not traditional. They're more require some creative thinking, uh, but an incredible opportunity. That, that's why I'm happy about the newsletters category, right? In yeah. some cases you have a newsletter, it's you know, paying off of ads or subscriptions or something, but you can do combine three newsletters with a target, targeted ad or an invite to a webinar and then sell high ticket, right? Or, or anything along those lines. So yeah. lots of these hidden opportunities if you, if you know uh, yeah. where to look at. It's for sure. A lot of opportunities and also, as I said, super dynamic like we were in dubai three weeks ago we did a, a, meet, a meet up there um i was with blake our ceo um we did uh, he did a presentation there was a q a someone goes oh you've launched newsletters um today you know on, on the flipper platform awesome and then so and then and then the follow-up question was how do you value a newsletter you know and yeah. the honest of course we can we can pretend we know but it's very hard to know and that's also exciting right it's exciting that there's a new type of asset category right now that has value how do you quantify that value and i think that's something that again we talk about opportunity um that's going to be something that we're going to explore in the next next six to 12 months as we get more newsletters on the platform and we can see what the discussions are between buyers and sellers um it's just another example of uh the online m a ecosystem evolving instagram um pages or instagram facebook groups like there's also value there i mean it's probably the mechanics of it is really difficult to transfer ownership and whatnot but there's still a value there and i think that's some kind of a side thing that we're at least for me that i'm picking up over time now um there is a value for everything and it's so unexplored it's untouched um, and that's why it's super motivating to be part of this ecosystem.